Pública. Hello and welcome to Issues and Answers, a production of the Government Information Service. I'm your host, Jacques Hengson Compton. We're going to do something a little different on this episode. Very recently, the Office of the Prime Minister had a press conference with the Police Commissioner, Mr. Milton Daisy, and of course, the Prime Minister of St. Lucia, the Honorable Philip J. Pierre. That press conference addressed matters pertaining to St. Lucia, such as citizen security and the government's efforts on increasing citizen security. So please stay tuned, and here is the press conference. Good morning, Ray Anthony, the Voice for Vision newspaper. My question, I guess, to the Commissioner of Police, um, are, are there any immediate measures government plans to take to halt gun violence in the country? Yes. Um there are measures in place to do that. Actually, it's not just now. We have measures in place um, to curb the gun violence in the country, especially down. Um, I know that um, the gun violence is more prevalent, I would say, in the South now, and um, that is what the cry is. Um, what we have done so far is um, to go in there. We have. Um, collaborated with some of the social groups, the non-government um, organizations. We have met with some of the persons out there. We have met with leaders and so on um, with a view of having persons mediate and to quell the situation. Uh, these are some of the things. And also on the other part, police, we have conducted police operations um, in Viewfort. We have frequent patrols, we have increased um, our patrols uh, by means of bicycles. This is something that we never had in view. Fort six bicycles were, um, were sent to view Fort where they go into the immediate um, community uh, to identify issues and so on and to report back to, to, the, um, to the station. Mm -hmm. yes. Thank you for your question. Sheffield Gillard from Loop News. My question is for you, Mr. PM. What, what do you, what would you like to say to the families of the island's 35, nearly 35 murdered victims um, right now? 33. Well, well. Um, it's 33. First of all, I just want to make it clear that I, like most other citizens of the country, not very happy, very concerned about the crime situation. Um, there seems to be. A, a provision of crime throughout the region, which is we, which we feel in St. Lucia. Only this morning in Barbados, there was a double murder. In Jamaica last week, there was a murder of an entire, of an entire family. Trinidad, there seems to be something is happening that has caused an escalation of, 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 of murders in the region. That doesn't, make, that doesn't mean that mm -hmm. we are good in St. Lucia or we have to sit back and relax and see what's happening in St. Lucia. Is we, we, we must just leave it because it's happening. There seems to be some things happening. There are all these, all these murders in, in, in the US where, where, hun, where scores of people are killed. So there seems to be something that's happening which is very negative. Having said so, we are very concerned, and we understand that the people of St. Lucia have to be concerned. We have nothing against people expressing their concern and even their outrage about what's happening in the crime situation. And I, too, I, I am outraged. And this is why we are working with the members of the police service to see what we can do to alleviate, alleviate that, that situation. To answer your more direct question, all I can do is wish them um, the families, my sincere condolences, my sympathies. Um, it's not good to lose anybody. Death is nothing nice. And for those who have died, and well, it's, I'm, I'm very sorry, but we need to find the, the deeper reason. It's not, it's, not, it's not something that we can just deal with on the surface. You know, 
Um, what's happening in the crime situation is concerning, and the government is concerned, and within the resources that are available to us, we are trying our best. But the situation is not good, and I will be the first person to tell you it needs to change, but we try. Thank you, Prime Minister. Um, I'm here. If, if there's, no, if anyone, okay. Um, with the current situation, um, crime-related facing the island, um, will the RSS be asked to um, intervene, probably come down to St. Lucia to help alleviate that situation? Yes. I've had discussions with the commissioner, he can tell you. He, he also spoke to the, the uh, commandant in the RSS, and we are bringing RSS troops into St. Lucia to assist with, to assist the members of the Royal St. Lucia Police Service. They should be here sometime in July, and it's a fact, yes, after consultation with the high command of the police force, we are um, causing some RSS officers to be in St. Lucia. Yes, that's going to happen. Okay, um, Mr. Commissioner, um, that question is for you. $40,000 a month for two canines uh, as part of the canine unit. Um, was that money well spent? Um, I, I could tell you what um, the canine at the time that the canine unit was in existence, what, what are the records. Actually, they attended 47, 47 operations with 63% success. And um, that success included um, firearms and drugs and also cash. We had over $40,000 in just one operation being recovered by the unit. We also had um, nine firearms recovered by the, um, by the unit and also an amount of drugs being recovered in, in that. So at the time, the canine unit, putting, a, putting out the cost of it, a canine unit, and I think it is one of the, I would say, the tools needed, especially now, um, with everything that's going on to to have in the Royal St. Lucia Police Force. Actually, um, the canines we had were able to detect large sums of cash, drugs, and the firearms. Yeah. Yes. What's the status of the unit right now, as we speak? Um, from my understanding that this unit is, um, we are waiting for a renewal of probably its contract, but I don't know um, because it's not within my power to renew it was not the contract was not with between the force and and the unit. Um, the unit was given to us also um, customs and um, financial investigations agency. It was open to them to use. But um, in terms of, I believe that we need a unit in the Royal Saint Lucia Police Force because it assists. Mr. PM, can you shed some light on, on that? Okay. On the dogs. Yeah, in terms of the renewal of the, the contract. Okay, um, I mean, I, I know there's a, there, mm. we need some level of excitement in the country. Yeah, yeah. I mean, things after COVID, there's need for, and the press is very happy to, to, to dive in. I, I understand that, you know, I understand. You know, I might tell you something, you know, some time ago, I was also, a, I was a reporter, you know that? And sometime in my life, I worked with the oh, press. Okay. So I understand the excitement of, of, of the press. You know that? Um, I, I, I think that, let, let, let me say something about this. You know, and I hope as this interview continues, I can be able to dispel some of the myths and the lies that are peddling in St. Lucia, real lies. And, I, and I'm, I'm very happy to dispel some of it. I have an agreement in my hand. Right? The K-9 unit started in April 2021, okay? It was an agreement for the provision of, of dogs and dog handlers. That was in April 2021. It continued and it, was, it, ought to, it had to be renewed on a yearly basis, right? We continued. The government, the, the, uh, the government of, of, of my, uh, our government continued with the process. But right now, every cent we spend, we have to send it and look carefully at it. Um, we must not take anything in, in, in silos. 
this government right now, we have to subsidize gasoline for the public of St. Lucia by nearly a million dollars. We subsidize flour. We subsidize cooking gas. Never before has any government had to subsidize foodstuff as we have to subsidize it. We receive no revenue from fuel, absolutely no revenue. I have a report on my desk right now from the Ministry of Finance to increase the price of fuel, first to make zero cents. To increase it to make zero cents. This is under consideration in my desk now. All the, 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 the profits and the pseudo-economists, I need them to tell me, give me a solution to the crisis of revenue, to the crisis in the to crisis of the supply chain, to the crisis of food in the world. If the solutions were available in the world, there would be absolutely no, no discussion. Inflation right now is at its highest for 40 years in the United States. Inflation. Fuel prices are at their highest. There is no one in St. Lucia. Regardless of whether they, they, they are geniuses in finance, could tell me the solution to the issues that we have now, except the fact that the government must tighten its belts, and the government must be prudent, and the government must look to serve its, the, the greatest priorities. The last government increased the fuel tax by $1.50, ostensibly to pay for the fixing of roads, the roads that they built by direct award. Right now, these roads have to be paid, and we get zero, zero for excise tax. I need the Minister of Finance to tell me how will we pay the debt that he incurred by direct award, with no tendering, for the construction of roads that he said would have been paid from the money from the excise tax. I need to get the answer for that. How will that revenue be raised? So you want to ask me about dogs, but I know what's, what's exciting is dogs now. The, the, the agreement for the, the dogs was, is correct? The Deputy Prime Minister says, it's correct. It's $40,000 a month. The agreement was sent to us, but we have to be prudent. We've not signed it. You haven't said we will not sign it. We are is under consideration, and that's a fact. It's, it, it, it's a very simple situation. We had to make the choice. We had to make the choice. I'll tell you something. We've had to have an entire cabinet meeting to discuss the price of bread. This is this is a real this is real situation. No government has ever had the crisis that we face. Even in COVID times, the government made revenue from fuel. Even during COVID times, at the height of COVID, the government made revenue for fuel. Now, we, we not, we're not making one cent from fuel. So I am I'm very, very concerned about the situation, but I know the government is trying its best. And I defy any talk show host, or any economist, or any so-called so -called competent ex-minister of finance to tell me how. How would it improve that, 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 that situation? So the answer to you on your dog question is that it's under consideration. The agreement is here and it's under consideration. Thank you, Prime Minister. Okay. Um, Mr. Daisy, um, <coughs> is there a need for another operation to fight crime? No, we have, um, continuously we have operations that are uh, intel driven and so on. It's, it's, not, uh, it's not reinventing the will, we would have new ideas, new um, strategies it's in place, but we continuously have operations to fight crime. Okay, and um, Chef, I will feed the mic to someone else with a question. Anyone else? Kareem Nelson from Hot 7. Um, Mr. Daisy, earlier in the week you mentioned that um, Lack of funding challenges the growth of the witness uh, protection program, uh, but feel free to correct me if I'm wrong. Um, won't monies from the Criminal Proceeds Act supposed to, to fund the witness protection program? No, actually, from the um, Proceeds of Crime Act, it's supposed to support law enforcement, and law enforcement is um, actually 
you have customs contributing to it, you have FIA contributing, you have the police contributing to, to it, and we have resources, other resources are needed. For example, we, we receive some vehicles, we, um, we are constantly receiving re, um, resources, but the, the PM has just explained his constraints with um, finances. So um, when it comes to witness protection, and it is not just simple. It may be one witness, but it spreads to an entire family or friends with that witness. For um, you may have one witness, but he has a wife or she has a, a husband. They have a partner. They have children, and then you cannot um, protect this individual and don't protect the others. So um, it is just a witness protection is a program of activities that you must have sufficient funding for. Okay, um, so on this segment with Commissioner and Prime Minister, we'll take two more questions and then we'll move to our next topic. Um, again, earlier this week you mentioned that um, the police can only work um, within their means. Um, so my question to, be, would be, to you would be, what are some of the major challenges affecting the police force in arresting crime on, on island because it, I think it's something the public is putting pressure that the police isn't doing enough, isn't doing enough, but can you at least shed some light on what are some of the challenges? Okay, um, our main challenge is in terms of uh, manpower. We may say that we have 1,300 officers over the island, but um, when you do the maths, it's how many officers are available on a daily basis because you have shifts of um, Officers are not machines, they're not robots. You work on an eight-hour shift, so you, you would see that you are dividing your numbers by three. Then you have to cater for um, days off, you have to cater for vacation, and so on, and all other types of leave. So in, in essence, to cover, and day by day, we see the activities of the police increasing, what we have to respond to. Um, so you, you would see the need for more officers. If we had more officers, we would be able to flood every community with, an of, with officers so that they are present all the time, but we cannot do that. So we have to prioritize, we have to look at what are the, our urgent needs and then to try to fulfill those needs. So that is um, the first thing that we are looking for. And also there are things in technology, I know um, we are receiving gradually, but technology now to fight crime, that is something that is very very important. Thank you, Commissioner. And last question, we'll go to Ms. Talium. Good morning, Kiva Talium, NBC. The question is for Mr. Commissioner. Have any arrests been made with regard to the gun violence which would have been witnessed in broad daylight in V4? Yes, we have had some, um, some arrests. And actually, in terms of the homicides that, that we've had on, um, on island, I think it is 33 recorded homicides on island. We have six of um, them being solved and awaiting, which suspects have been identified and awaiting forensic <coughs> results to charge. We have four, in four cases, persons have been charged and are on remand for those offenses. And we also recorded four police shootings, in those four police shootings, three of them have been um, recommended for an inquest, and there is one matter, uh, this is the one in Viewfort um, with the young, young um, school, um, young student. This matter is we are waiting advice from the DPP as to the way forward with this particular one. So. Um, so we are working on all of them. It takes some t um, sometimes um, the time might be lengthy. Some of them are, um, you could do it right away, and that is with evidence. What evidence you have? Um, did eyewitnesses come forward? Did um, did you get a, a quick match or, or something of forensic evidence? So um, all these things take time. Yeah. Thank you, Commissioner, and thank you to the members of the media. Um, Prime Minister, do you have any closing remarks for this segment on citizen security? Yeah, yeah. just to, to tell, to assure the public of St. Lucia, the government, like all citizens, we are concerned. We're concerned about the crime situation. Our safety uh, as a people cannot be compromised. But with the best will in the world, we have to be able to back it up with resources. You try and um, 
I am in the process of signing an, an agreement that will give the, the police service 40 new vehicles. The training vote that was stopped by the last government, the training vote that was stopped by the last government, the training vote that was stopped by the last government has been reinstated this year with $200,000. It, it could be more, but that's what we have now. We, we have started a swift justice program. We have put in $2 million in the budget to, to reduce on the backlog of cases that exist in the system. Right? You heard from you heard from your you heard that there are a number of cases, particularly murder cases, that, that are stuck in the system. We have put in two million dollars in, in what we call a swift justice program. In terms of conditions for the police, we are starting construction on the Grosile police station. In terms of conditions for the police, the Vivot police station. You must understand that the problem at the Viewford police station in its initial stages would have cost the solution taxpayer just over $100,000. Or let's be, let's be fair and say between $120,000. It was left to fester. It was left to fester for years without the government at the time spending $100,000 and that there was no fuel prices, the, no fuel crisis, there was still revenue from, from, from fuel. They allow it to fester, and now it's going to cost us over $2 million to repair the Viewfort Police Headquarters. We are doing that. In the budget this year, there is money to repair police stations. We are looking into the possibility of drones for the police service. We are trying, and, and, and we're starting by, as I said, bringing in the RSS to help, but we're seeing if we can increase the numbers, the numbers in the force. We are trying to boost the morale of the members of the police service. I've met with the welfare, and we've we are discussing plans to stop some of the problems or to halt or, or to limit some of the problems that exist. So we are trying. I've, I've said to you before that my biggest concern is the security of the country, the economy of the country, and I have a vested interest. And I know some people get annoyed when I say that. They say I say it enough, but I have a vested interest because I went to school on the money of a police officer. So I have a vested interest in the welfare of the policemen and women. So I can assure the public of St. Lucia that the government, within the resources that are available to us, we are leaving no stone unturned to see if we can alleviate the situation of crime in the country. But it is a concern, and I agree that people are concerned about it. Thank you, Prime Minister. And, and just to um, close by saying that crime and citizen security is all of our responsibility and it is citizens who are committing crime and the public is again encouraged to assist um, the police in their efforts to for information gathering and also um, in the tampering of crime scenes etc so we too as citizens have a responsibility for our welfare and security thank you commissioner daisy and thank you prime minister um, for this session okay <laughs> She's been watching, waiting, wondering when the sands of time will give way to a tide of change and for yesterday and today to become a new tomorrow. For a time when her son can kiss the cheeks of your loved one and her stars can twinkle in her honeymoon skies. When her earthly embrace will reassure and calm your soul.
nature set you free. She is Saint Lucia. So welcome back everyone. Um, Commissioner, I will let you have some closing um, remarks um, to St. Lucian's and to our media colleagues. Yes, um, actually sometime last week we heard of an anti-gang unit and persons are asking what is, what really is an anti-gang unit. Mm -hmm. Actually the aim of an anti-gang unit and in fact the one we, we want to introduce to St. Lucia is to dismantle any existing gangs or criminal groups in St. Lucia. And um, by doing this, it is um, getting the, we would need to get the intelligence in terms of their networks. For example, um, I could give you the, for the gun coming into the, in St. Lucia, we do not manufacture guns, so you could safely say that the guns are coming from the outside and coming in. Um, whether it is through the illegal ports or the legal ports. So we have to find the information, especially through the legal ports, where you are trying to dismantle the network because it has to do with networking. Um, with the, firstly, with the supplier, then you have the shipper, then if it is coming through the legal means, at customs, because that is the place where that is the border, we have customs. Um, so we have to get the information as to how those firearms are coming in so that you could break it. Um, it is sometimes most likely that during the process, during that supply chain, whether it is a courier, or, um, whoever a customs a broke, the brokers, the, um, the shippers, somebody or more than one of those channel, they are corrupt practices in there. So we need to identify that. And once you could break one of those um, channels, then we believe we can, we can safely dismantle the, um, the guns. And um, one of the most crucial part of um, the Andy Gang unit is our FIA, the Financial Investigative um, Authority, where they would be going at the assets of those persons who are committing the crime because crime persons committing commit crime for profit and once you have going after the profit you have dismantled um, the gang they would not have the funding required and also the assistance that they get whether it be through the um, law enforcement and so on once you could identify them and that is one thing that i will not tolerate in fact I'm not tolerating in the force, it is um, corruption. And I know commissioners before me, they would tell you the same thing. Um, could give you, just in May, an officer was dismissed for corrupt practice. And this is, um, once we have the evidence, persons, um, we have persons saying police are, are corrupt, this and that, but once we must have the information to, to act upon it. And um, once you are going to give information to a criminal, gang, I believe you are a criminal and then you don't deserve to be in the Royal St. Lucia Police Force. And the persons, officers have come crying. I could understand if a mistake is made, but not for assisting criminals because you are one like them and then you would be dismissed immediately yeah, for that. At, in the same vein, I want to commend the officers who are out there who are doing their best, especially the SSU who have to respond ever so often when gunshots are fired and so on. You leave your, sometimes I have to take officers who are off, ask them to leave home midnight or whatever time to be in certain locations. So I want to commend these officers. The officers from CRB who are on the ground, especially in view for trying to to reach the troubled persons, persons who um, we know that sometimes the crime, it does not affect you personally, but persons fear that at what point it would reach my doorstep. So we have guns being fired all over. What time um, a stray bullet would hit an elderly person? You have children who cannot sleep because they are, when they go out, they have nightmares hearing guns 
um, firing at them. So um, these are some of the things, and I applaud the officers who were going into the community to do that. The beaten patrol officers who are always present. So um, just asking the public, I know. Yeah, everybody, it is, we are hearing the cry. It is time now for you to act, but it would not take one day to do it. Um, I'm calling upon the social um, services to continue doing what they are doing and more to come in so that they could address the situation in, um, in the islands. Um, crime is not just um, what we see. We, we see guns being fired, but there are deeper problems than that. We need to get down into those problems. We have um, upbringing problems. We have, um, we have problems of ill discipline. So uh, we need to correct that so that we could see, we could see that, that change. Some, and um, I, may, I may even go further to say that we have a problem with parenting in, in St. Lucia, where parents do not give the proper guidance to persons, or there would be parents who want to give the proper guidance, but these, um, these kids would go out there and then get influenced by other persons. Um, we've had instances where school children are being sponsored by these same criminals, so they lure them into doing whatever they are doing. Why go to school and then spend eight hours on a bench when I could get when I could get my sneaker and my my, my whether it's your Nike to go to work? So all these things are issues that we need to to take care of so that we could see a, a change in Saint Lucia. However, we the police we are committed into doing it, and I know that the government I. Um, the Prime Minister is consulting with me, I'm consulting with him all the time, and then what are the resources needed? And um, he mentioned the vehicles. I know that is one of the things that would help us a great, a great deal. And that was the press conference held by the Office of the Prime Minister, featuring the Police Commissioner, Mr. Milton Daisy, and the Prime Minister of St. Lucia, the Honorable Philip J. Pierre, and they addressed matters of citizen security. I want to thank the audience for watching and please stay tuned to the National Television Network for programming such as this and much more educational and informative programming on government policy. Thank you for watching. Please stay tuned. We'll see you next time.